Do you wait for them to come to you? I thought you were supposed to be regulating engineering. Yes. In other words, you monitor infrastructural development. You monitor your engineers at work, especially those that you registered. Yeah. Now, but because most of people in government, most people in government will tell you that Nigerian companies, engineering companies, have not been able to deliver on the projects they've been given to do, and that's why they're always going out to get foreign engineering firms. There are twenty-four thousand uh, people who are registered by by current engineering personnel who are registered by current. Current has a staff of 120. So it's, it's almost impossible, well, it's impossible for us to monitor every one of them. So we depend on feedback. Like it's, it's like everything else. We depend on feedback from the users of those people who have been registered <coughs> as engineering personnel. We do go to sites. The other day, we went to the uh, site of the new airport that was being reconstructed in Abuja, unsolicited, went there, and when we got there, we made a few points about the process that had been adopted in all these airport refurbishments. The minister has tried, he's taken the bull by the horn to say, look, we have a problem, let us do something about it. But the process wasn't correct. Many of those airports that are being reconstructed don't have approved drawings. They were given as design and build to architectural firms. Those are the kind of things that we see. And we said to them, look, yes, the intention was good, but the process is incorrect. Right. That is what we try to do by educating people. And if we start with government uh -huh. and we get government to do it right, everybody else will follow. And that seems to be very instructive because, I mean, in terms of quality, again, connecting into that, um, now we're grappling with this power situation. We're trying to see how we can get stable <coughs> electricity. Yeah. What does current? Does current have any role to play? Because institutions are supposed to be maybe like a, a, a ground where you can get a lot more professionals to sustain that sector. Yeah. Is current mindful of the, this? Yes, we are. And the, what we can do and what we are doing is to ensure that the personnel who will man all these power plants when they're run when they're completed, are properly trained. Now, next month, we're having a retreat where we're going to look at the quality of teaching that we're getting in our polytechnics. We've done a bit of a survey of the polytechnics and the technical colleges, and the result was rather sad. So we're going to sit down as a council and say, what can we do to improve that? Now, that will help the power situation. Because, again, there's no point building all these uh, power plants and new transmission lines if you don't have the qualified personnel who will maintain them. You know, how, how good, it brings us uh, to the question, how good are our engineers? Uh, now, you just painted a picture, a very sordid picture of what comes out of the polytechnics. And some would even say some universities are not immune from that kind of uh, decay. But uh, if we have a policy in Nigeria, which uh, we understand uh, exists, uh, that tells us uh, we must uh, patronize local engineers, local content initiative and ideas first before we actually sought uh, expertise from outside. How much of an expert do we have in a country that can actually fix some of these things? We talk about uh, developments. We don't have enough. We definitely don't have enough. Um, <coughs> if we were to do all the things that we need to do in this country to leapfrog our development, we will need 10 times as many engineering personnel as we have now. Well, it's not peculiar to engineering. It's everywhere else. It's a, we don't have enough doctors. We don't have enough lawyers. We don't have enough anything. But the few that we do have work very hard, and they work under very, very difficult conditions. If you are in charge of a road, Lagos Ibadan Road, or you are the Minister of Works um, engineer in charge, and you get a budget of one million naira a year to maintain mm -hmm. that road, what can you do with it? it? This is one of the reasons why for a long time, and this has been going on since the 70s, there has been a proposal to have a road fund and a road authority that would take care <coughs> of if, say, especially roads. And the intention is that this authority will 
not work like the Ministry of Works, which is now doing these things. It would be like FAN, which is almost autonomous. But we had something similar to this some time ago. Where, uh, no, I mean, where they were, where we're paying toll yes. on most of these federal roads. But those, what happened to the farm? But the money was going to the Ministry of Works, which then had to pay back into the consolidated fund. So why didn't they come up with a suggestion at that time <coughs> that it should be changed so that they don't stop the It's been there since the, the early 70s. This thing about having a road authority is something that has been there for 30 years. It's been going on since the military days. I think in something like 2009, then President Obasanjo, um, I think it was, actually was going to sign the, 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 the authority to set this thing up. Somehow it didn't happen. Uh, that was when FEMA was set up as a temporary measure pending the establishment of this road authority and the road fund. Uh, well, you well, know, there's, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, Chamberlain, yeah. there's this uh, talk, uh, the, former, uh, the interim, uh, former interim head of government, uh, Ernest uh, Shoneko, yes. had uh, late last year uh, when uh, he, he talked about the Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission, uh, which is already, uh, you know, the IC, yeah, ICRC, R yeah. RRC Act. And uh, he says that, well, there are other challenges uh, in impeding the smooth takeoff of this particular act. And he says, <coughs> excuse me, there's this absence of coherent infrastructure investment program, non-integration of PPP. Uh, perhaps I should stop there. Let's talk about the uh, the private partnership uh, program, the initiative uh, of the government, and how that has helped uh, in building infrastructures in the country uh, using Nigerian engineers. You mean how it should help? Yes. Not how it has helped. Because as uh, the former head of state said, the ICRC is still trying to grapple with the concessions that have already been done. Many things were done in an ad hoc manner. The ICRC is trying to regulate and make sure that all these things are streamlined so that you can have coherent policies about how things would happen. It is only after you have this coherent policy that you can begin to invite people to partner with you. Nobody would come and say wants to be a partner and invest 20 billion naira if he's not sure that his investment will be protected. The only successful PPP road infrastructure to date is the Lekki Expressway. And it took a bold step by the Lagos State Government to do it. There was no law backing it up. There was no, they had to basically start from scratch and dream up how are we going to do this. So what I think the head of state was saying was that, look, we have problems. We're trying to get out of them. I think once the ICRC begins to streamline all these processes, you will see a lot more investment by interested investors in infrastructure. The NIPP was done ad hoc. You know, the National mm -hmm. Integrated Power Project. Yeah. It was done ad hoc by President uh, Obasanjo. There was no law backing it up. That's why the governors could come back and start protesting about their money being spent without their asking.